Have you ever watched a crazy video about prime number music and wondered, how the heck was this made? Well, if so, you're in luck, because this is the making of the rhythm of the primes. So a little while ago, I released this video, The Rhythm of the Primes, and I think it's safe to say it was more popular than anything I've ever done in my entire life. I think one of the coolest things about that was actually the comments section. Take this comment, for example. I love this, but the microtones make me wince so hard, like metal scraping over ceramic. Maybe a version where notes are shifted to the nearest member of the scale? This comment inspired me to take a whole different approach to the sonic mapping. Check it out. Okay, joking aside though, I thought it might be fun to do a kind of Q&A with the comment section and take you behind the scenes of the rhythm of the primes. One of the big questions people asked was, how was it made? Both in terms of the visual and the audio. So all the visuals were done in MS Paint and all of the audio was done in GarageBand. And then I just kind of put them together. Just kidding, of course I did them with code. The music was done in Python using something called Scamp Suite for computer assisted music in Python which is a set of libraries that I've been building for over half a decade. The code looks like this, and it was honestly pretty simple to write. But part of the reason it can be so simple is because of all of the work I put into Scamp over the years. For example, the microtonality, the bending of the notes so that they fit in between the cracks of the keyboard. There's a ton of managing of MIDI channels with different pitch bend values going on behind the scenes there, but it all happens automatically within Scamp. As for the visuals, I did them in processing, which is this uh, amazing library in Java for doing 2D and 3D animation. The code for that looked like this, and honestly it's a little bit less polished, but it does the job. I'll come back to this code at the end of the video and explain it in a little bit more detail, but I know that some people don't just like watching code be explained, so we're gonna move on right now. Fakey McFakeface says, Wow, developing Scamp seems like it must have taken an incredible amount of time and energy. I can't believe you make it freely available for anyone to use. Not to mention all the videos on your channel. Is there some way that I can support your work financially? Thanks so much for the kind words, Fakey. Since you ask, one of the best ways to support Scamp and this channel is through Patreon. Look, you can click right there. And you get some fun goodies that way too. For example, if you want the entire MIDI of the Rhythm of the Primes, it's up there right now. In the future, I'm also planning on packaging short experimental music applications that people can try on their own computer, like this one, which sonifies the Collatz conjecture. Also, to give you a little extra incentive, for every new patron that joins before December 1st, I'll make you a custom version of the Rhythm of the Primes using whatever mapping you want within reason. Another great way to support my work is through my course on cadenze.com, which introduces the basics of Python programming through making music. But yeah, what a lovely and clearly real comment. Such a great jumping off point for self-promotion. So a bunch more of you asked for a long five to 10 minute video of just the prime number music with no interruptions. I actually made one a little while ago. You can check it out right here. Okay, so this comment was really popular. What would happen if you took this whole rhythm and sped it up until it became a chord? So in case you're not one of these nerds and you're wondering what does that even mean? So if I have a repeating impulse that's happening every second or two or three times a second, it's gonna sound like a rhythm. But if I speed that up faster and faster and faster, eventually when it crosses about the 20 hertz threshold, which is the lowest end of human hearing, it's gonna start to sound like a pitch to us rather than a rhythm. Check it out. So what that means is that any polyrhythm, if you speed it up, becomes a chord. So what I've got here is a reprocession with the entire MIDI of the rhythm of the primes. And I've made it so that it makes this little bloopy sound when all the primes play. Check it out. Anyway, so let's try speeding it up. So I'm going to drag it so it's a little bit faster. Okay, it's not a chord yet. Let's go a little faster. Okay, not a chord yet, but pretty cool sounding. Let's keep going faster. Love it. 100 is kind of the maximum that it'll let me speed it up to, but let me go ahead and glue this item so I can speed it up even more. Ah, we're entering chord town. Ta-da, there's your chord. Okay, I understand if you're a little bit disappointed. The thing is, there's some subtleties to this idea of speeding something up all the way to audio rate. If you want it to sound pure, then you have to have started with sine waves. But sine waves at a rhythmic speed are inaudible. The truth is, if you start with something as audible as a rhythm, then when you speed it up, that sound is a kind of a combination of the rhythmic pattern 
and the timbre of the sound that you started with. One comment I got a lot was people saying that actually it's not a polyrhythm, it's a polymeter. This is actually a really interesting point. Honestly, I'm probably gonna make a whole separate video about this topic because it gets really nicely at the relationship between notation and sound. While we're clarifying things, a number of other people commented about how the sieve of Eratosthenes actually can stop at the square root of the number. So if you're trying to find all the primes up to 100, you can stop at 10. This is because any factor bigger than the square root, like 20, has a corresponding factor less than the square root, which in this case would be five. Now, in my case, the whole point was just to do an infinite polyrhythm. So the square root of infinity would be still infinite, but the point is well taken. Okay, I love this comment from Devin Morris. who says, different way of understanding the polyrhythm you generated. The primes create a melodic line, and this melodic line is played against itself at half tempo, third tempo, fifth tempo, etc. This is a very cool observation. So if you look here at this kind of zoomed out image of the prime polyrhythm, you can see this strand right here, this is the primes. But this strand right here, this is two times all of the primes. And here's three times all of the primes. And so you can think of it as the same prime melody played along with itself at different speeds. By the way, in music, we have a term for this kind of thing. It's called a prolation canon. So a canon is something kind of like row, row, row your boat, where so a canon everyone is something kind of like row, row, row your boat, um, where everyone is singing a little bit the same in time, part, um, and also offset a little bit in time, pitch, so they're and also sometimes during the Renaissance, there were all these composers obsessed with things like canons, and one of the things they tried is called a prolation canon, where the different parts sing at different speeds the exact same music. There are a few subtleties there that have to do with the way that Renaissance musicians think about time signatures, but so let's take a listen to all of this. So first, here's the prime melody. Then here's the two times the primes melody. Then here's the three times the primes melody. And here they are all together. Now, of course, the actual rhythm of the primes that I showed you is an infinite number of these melodies all on top of one another at slower and slower and slower speeds. So yeah, that's the prolation canon of the primes. So one person pointed out that inverted harmonic series is actually often known as the subharmonic series. Actually, this comment is really an email from one of the people on my thesis committee, but it's true. I think it is more commonly known as the subharmonic series. I think part of the reason I think of it as the inverted harmonic series is because it is literally an inversion of all of the intervals of the harmonic series. Ramenheim says, wouldn't it be cool to have a game where prompts and events were timed to polyrhythms so that you'd get this kind of predictable but unpredictable environment? Please make this game. I want to play it. One last thing that came up a couple of times is that people wanted sheet music of the rhythm of the primes. One of the big things about developing Scamp is I'm a composer and I wanted to be able to make sheet music of all of the algorithmic processes that I was doing. So in Scamp, making sheet music is very simple. So here's the code. All I have to do is add this line to start transcribing for the notes playback. And at the end say, stop transcribing, convert it to a score, give it a time signature and show it. If I run this, it takes a little bit of time to run through the entire thing. And then it pops up with a notation like this. So that was a PDF of the music notation, but you can also export it in music XML, which you can load into a program like MuseScore, which is great because not only can you play it back, but also you can clean up the notation and create something a little bit more polished like this. By the way, I'm throwing that notation up on Patreon too. One last question I found kind of amusing. Just a simple question. I want to do a rap. What should I focus on most when I want to edit or make a good soft? I would love to. So I'm pretty sure this is a spam comment. There were a few comments like this that mentioned soft and teen nice and then trailed off in the middle of a sentence. But on the off chance that this person wants to make a rap based on the rhythm of the primes, please, please do it. Okay, so that was my little comments Q&A. Hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to respond to this video with a whole slew of comments, then maybe I could make a making of making of the rhythm of the primes. I love a good meta comments Q&A. But seriously though, thank you all so much. And if you're interested in a breakdown of the code, I'm gonna go over that right now. Okay, so here's what it looks like to make the rhythm of the primes using Python and the Scamp libraries. 
So I'm going to start by importing everything from the scamp libraries. And also because I want to do the subharmonic series stuff, I'm going to import a function called hertz to MIDI from scamp extensions.pitch. I'm also importing SymPy, which is a library for symbolic math. I'm really just using SymPy to get a list of all the primes up to 10,000 because it's easier to just use theirs than to roll my own. So the first few lines of the script just create a session with a tempo of 150 and create a new piano part. And then this line puts the pedal down on the piano part for the whole time. This is the line where we ask SymPy to create a list of the first 10,000 primes. And then this right here is the kind of core of the mapping. It's a function that takes a prime number and gives you the pitch. As you can see, we're taking some high hertz value and dividing by where the prime is in the list of the prime. So higher prime, we're dividing by a higher number. Scamp deals with MIDI pitch numbers where like 60 is middle C. And so this hertz to MIDI function converts whatever that frequency in hertz is to MIDI pitches. And then the core of the script is down here. So K is gonna be the number that we're currently on. It starts at two and then it counts up from there. And we're gonna, while true, so do this forever. We're gonna repeatedly factor the number K and then for each factor within K, we're gonna get its pitch using the pitch from prime function. We're gonna make the volume a little bit louder for primes than for non-primes. And then we're gonna ask the piano to play a note with that pitch, volume, and the duration of an eighth note. We're gonna say blocking equals false, which allows the different factors to play simultaneously. And then we're gonna wait an eighth note and move on to the next number. So let's take a listen to it. Hopefully sounds pretty familiar. Admittedly, this is a slight simplification of the script that I used for the actual video, but not much. The main difference is that I said new MIDI part here, which allows me to send a MIDI stream to an external application. And then I also did some fun stuff with panning so you could hear some of the primes coming from the left and some from the right. Again, the key to this script is the from scamp import star, which imports this session object, which has all of this stuff for keeping track of different tempos and creating different instruments and doing all the pitch bends. This script is only simple because I spent over five years building the tools that it uses. Okay, but what about the visuals? Let's take a look at the processing code. We've got the main script here, and we've got a class called prime score, which is basically the class that I use to draw all of those sequences of numbers in all of the different animations throughout the video. You tell it where to put the upper left corner, how big to make the font size, how far apart the numbers should be, and which primes you wanna use. And it also has this number progress, which determines where the caret is as you scroll along. There were various different ways I wanted this animation to evolve over time for different parts of the video. So there's also a file called settings, which has all of the different versions that I wanted for the video. You can see here's the two by three by five by seven settings, the two by three by five by seven by 11 settings. We've got large prime settings. So if I take say the two through 29 settings, and I go ahead and say right here, settings equals two through 29 settings. And I'm actually gonna make this save frames location null, otherwise it's gonna save a bunch of frames to my hard drive. And if I run it, we get the animation. Admittedly, this code is a little bit messy, but it's functional. And ultimately, in creative coding, that's really all that matters. So there you go. Thanks for watching. I hope that this deep dive into the code was interesting to you. And as always, please like, subscribe, and send me money.